Hello, thanks for joining. We will wait just a couple of minutes for others to join us and we start shortly. Okay, so welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today for our webinar, Why a CDP Should Be the Foundation of Your Market Stack. Let's start with a quick introduction. My name is Maria Laura, I'm responsible for the marketing activities here at Bitbank and I'll be here to host the webinar today. I'm joined by Andrea Belletti, Customer Data and Marketing Analyst at Bitbank, and our guest speaker, Jonathan Von Abel, Head of Business Development, EMEA from Treasure Data. Hi and welcome to you both. Hi, hi all. Hi, everybody. Pleased to be here. So before we start, I'll just go through a couple of housekeeping matters. We will hold a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit them anytime during the webinar, and we will look to answer as many of these at the end of the session. This session will be recorded and available on demand shortly after the live session. And finally, we appreciate any feedback you have on this webinar. So if there is anything you were expecting to see that you didn't or information that you thought was particularly useful to you, we always welcome your feedback. Our agenda today will be a brief introduction to the marketing stack, what is a foundational marketing stack, the challenges, why CDPs can help, and then a conclusion. Thank you, Andrea. I'll pass you the word. Thank you very much, Maria Laura, and welcome, everybody. So uh, let's start uh, with the infamous, infamous picture of marketing stack landscape that you see in this slide. Uh, I wanted to start with this image as it's a great representation of how many tools and technologies are made available to the businesses right now, from the data in of all the possible sources, online and offline, to the data management itself, in all the aspects regarding identity resolution, modeling, segmentation, automation, and of course, all the platforms that provide the final activation of the channels that allows to reach the customers. And I didn't mention even a tenth of the capabilities represented. And as we are talking right now, the number of new actors that are joining this picture is increasing constantly. They are all meant to support the companies in specific tasks. But each company has its own goals and strategies. And as a matter of fact, uh, the marketing stacks were born to bring some light on this world, defined as fundamental packages of tools, from data collection to data activation as a baseline for a digital transformation. Don't get me right. There is no right or correct set of tools that vendors uh, can be considered to be the best marketing stack. Because every business has different way of working and, of course, different objectives. A business can build its own, its own stack and the puzzle with the, the species that you want and based on the specific needs. So what is important is that the tools chosen create value to the marketing needs of the company. Okay, so here we have an example of a marketing stack that a company could have in place. And as we can see, we have tools that manage the different part of a marketing that connects the data available on the left side of this picture, like digital behaviors, second and third part data, legacy system, to the right part of this picture, the activation channels, like paid media channels, direct marketing channels. As we can see, 
In this anonymous but a real scenario, this client had quite a comprehensive stack already. They had a CRM that brings customer data to a data management platform that is connected to an analytics tool in order to have online behavioral data. And all of these data flow themselves in a different activation channel. As BitBang, we manage and support these companies practically in each step and technology took individually with dedicated teams. And most importantly, we help our clients strategically in order to have this puzzle working at its best to help reaching the marketing goals required. An important thing to point out, actually, is that this is an example. There is no definition of a set of tools or vendors that a marketing stack has to have. Every company must build its marketing stack with the actors that it wants, as long as the tools implemented answer the marketing need. So, starting from the market landscape that we saw in the first slide, it's pretty easy to understand how the marketing stack represents a huge change from the past and a must have in order to approach a real enterprise digital transformation. And as the benefits are multiple, we summarize them in four main ones. The first thing that we want to point out and as a value is that this, the marketing stack has, is a natural extension of capabilities of measurement and analysis by connecting different tools and different data together. I'm pretty sure this is self-explaining as a value. The importance of having a data-driven approach as much unified as possible is something that we are obsessed with also as Big Bang, as it's the present and the future of a marketing based on facts. That means data. Another great benefit is that uh, with a marketing stack properly implemented, the ownership of the marketing action can be brought in-house without potentially depending on any external companies to implement the marketing strategies. For us, firstly, as Big Bang, the objective of the digital transformation is to bring back the management of all the flow in the hands of the companies, focusing mainly on the strategical support instead of being just a technical crutch to rely on and to solve the single platform issues. It is definitely an important part at the beginning of the phase. But we want to focus on leveraging complex and really profitable use cases. Along with this point, it goes the capability of having a real data-driven marketing approach, managing and connecting all the steps needed for this goal in order to have a fundamental set of tools to really manage all the pieces. From data ingestion to identity resolution to channel orchestration. From, so to support the marketing team in their job and develop a real digital transformation in which all the possible automation between the dots of the puzzle we saw before has been put in place. But as mentioned, as Big Bang, we helped our clients to develop this transformation through all these years and working with them daily to build a really various types of stacks with customized structure for each company needs, we had also the chance to see some common challenges that we've been able as Bitbank to make opportunities regardless of the specific set of tools. So one of the biggest challenge that we saw from our clients is the time to activation and the time to market. Marketing teams are not able right now to get the answer they need in real time, as they have to deal with so many tools, all of which are capturing different data assets and all of which need to be analyzed, actually. Linked to this timing issue, there is also the connection between the different technology, both as, tracking, both as technical struggle when they are not easily implemented and also as loss, loss of data consistency due to different implementation ways. Another topic that usually relies behind the marketing stack is the identity resolution, as a lot of the technologies that compose the marketing stack have often their specific way to handle identity itself. And a lot of the times, these ways can fully satisfy the single customer view needed by the companies, with the requirement to be capable of managing a lot of different ideas, known and unknown, personal, device, every word, coming from different sources in a single place, in a single place that should be the truth. What the points above as, as a consequence, as a natural consequence, is the difficulty 
of gaining the full potential of all the single pieces of the stack. So gaining potential for what the people pay. So even if the marketing stack represents a huge, a really, really huge change from the past, from the previous world, we still see that a lot of companies struggles having silos that don't allow to reach the holy grail of the companies, meaning a consistent, connected, and actionable customer experience through all the possible touch points, online and offline. Yeah, we saw the challenges. Now we want to give you the solution. So the answer to this need of consistency and actually the solution of the opportunities we saw provided by the marketing stacks are the CDPs. So let's start with the two definition uh, taken from Gartner and the CDPs. Right now we are seeing that Gartner defined them, define a customer data platform is a marketing system that unifies a company's customer data from marketing and other channels to enable customer modeling and optimize the timing and targeting of messages and offers. As we can see, Gartner points out the light on the marketing application of the platforms, focusing on the delivery outcomes that the CDPs enable and putting the customer as the center of the marketing efforts. Going to the CDP Institute, we can see that a customer data platform is a packaged software that creates a persistent, unified, customer database that is accessible to other systems. Again, we can see that the concept of single customer view is a huge thing. So we can see this is a wide definition. And a lot of platforms actually can fit in, creating a possible and potential confusion on specific capabilities that a platform must have to be considered as a CDP. This has been also proved by the fact that the certification brought by the Institute has been already reviewed once in order to specify better which ones has to be considered as a customer data platform. So we're going to do a step forward. In our opinion as Bitbang, based on the needs of the companies we work with every day, we have decided to do uh, to the drill down with the aspect that we saw in the market as I as I rele relevant to consider a CDP a foundational platform for a marketing stack. The starting point must be the main objective of these technologies, that is to unlock the single customer view, meaning to have all the possible data related to the customer of the companies, online and offline, structured and unstructured, known and unknown, unified in one platform that can make this data available to all the possible channels and tools used by the marketing teams and actually by any teams that a company can have, like a media or analyst. So each single piece of the information on the left side of this picture allows us to define better the customer. In marketing world, this means to satisfy specific need and increase the customer value itself. So what the CDB must be able to do is to ingest data from different data sources across all the organization stitching together those different data fragments into a single unified view of the customer. These are the basics to be able to segment those customers based on all the variables available, and the CDPs enable those data in real time for data-driven marketing action, allowing to export those information to external system and have an optimized and profitable customer engagement and analysis. In order to, uh, to satisfy these requirements that we saw, we recognize this following feature as key for a CDP to be, again, a foundational technology. As we can see, the CDPs must be able to collect and manage different types of data sources, behavioral, personal, uh, device data, unify those data to obtain a single and highly enriched customer view. With this capability of providing a single customer view, it's really important for a CDP to be able to orchestrate the data by defining rules for segmentation to be applied in a platform itself in real time, to better target the marketing efforts, and to be able to analyze and modeling in an advanced automated data-driven approach all the data available for activation and measurement of those data 
in the fastest and profitable way possible by sending them to the dedicated tools. So going back to our sample of architecture, this feature allows us, allows to the CP to be the base of the architecture that we previously saw, putting itself as the main source of truth among the pieces of the marketing stuff without changing anything about the DSE situation of the companies, just acting as a support of all the single pieces, bringing a higher value to each actor of the picture. For example, customer data platform can uh, take data from CRM and send back data enriched from other sources, like online behavior, or be connected with the DMP to provide segments obtained from an advanced statistics model as predicted ones or connected with analytics tools in order to manage online behavioral data that could be triggers for marketing action in real time. And also, of course, connecting the CDP with the marketing channel to send real time segment and receive also the delivery data that can enrich again the customer profile with the interaction that he had during the different touch point of a customer journey. As you can see at the bottom of this, we want, and we won't stress enough this concept, a CDP shouldn't bring any technical struggles during the implementation phase. And besides the composition of the stack and the pieces that compose it, this is a foundational technology by its definition that can be applied in every scenario. Okay, so uh, we saw, uh, we defined the purpose and the capabilities and the feature actually that the CDP should have, starting from the textbook sentences and reaching those with our experience as bit back on the daily job. But now we want to dive deeper on the actual potential that these platforms have, a day, have as a daily practical impact. And in order to do that, I, want, uh, I would like Jonathan to join me and to show us how Treasure Data can answer your daily questions. Thank you very much, Andrea, uh, and hi to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, I thought rather than just uh, you know approach this from uh, a pure slideway perspective, is actually to look at how customers are approaching us and the questions we see coming coming up time and time again. And I think this echoes a lot of what of Andrea has already said uh, in his synopsis of the markets and the marketing stack and how how that's currently progressing. Um, naturally. You know, the first and most important job, uh, as, as already mentioned, is the ability to break down those data silos. And so the, the first question is always based around that and how, how the tool does that. And I think we will have a look at that. Um, also, then, when we talk about single view of a customer, I think this is something that's been touted since, you know, since the beginning of the CRM days. You know, it's always been the holy grail and it's always been sort of very unobtainable because CRM was always based on a very particular function or particular side of data, which is more sales orientated. Uh, and, and so how does the CDP change from that? Um, then we start getting into the actual, you know, the, the marketing aspects of it, you know, the ability to do true omni-channel campaigns and, and how do you do measurements across all of those various different interactions, whether they're online or offline, uh, it's to create their true understanding, um, which is ultimately, you know, how, how do you build the understanding of your customers, of, of you know, the, the behaviors, their trends, you know, can you really have that view whereby you're not only understanding the individual, but the groups of individuals and how, how they interact with your brand. And ultimately, you know, how is this going to help? How is this tool going to help our business, you know, improve our operational efficiency, our time to market, our, our ROI, you know, in terms of the our investment in marketing or our investment in the tool? So I thought I'd, I'd approach those those five by actually just showing you um, some aspects of the tool itself. Uh, it's always better to see it in real life rather than um, uh, rather than just talk about it. Whilst we won't dive into the tool itself, uh, there's many risks in that. Um, what I have done is just taken these screenshots of, of 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 being in the tool, so you can you can physically see how we handle this. So, so the first and most important aspect, obviously, is breaking down those data silos. And for us at Treasure Data, that is the 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 absolute key um, to 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 how we approach this uh, this unified customer view. Um, the approach that we have is that. Treasure data is a completely data agnostic tool. So, so to us, it doesn't matter where your data is coming from. It doesn't matter what format it's in. It doesn't matter uh, 
what what um, attributes it's bringing. It doesn't matter where you want to store it. It doesn't matter where you want to where you want to put it or how you want to utilize it. So, so the tool itself is completely flexible to allow you to go into any of your business systems and pull whatever data is relevant to your specific marketing needs. And I guess that's going back into that same thing uh, as Andre was mentioning that there is no predefined marketing stack. There is no one set solution which everyone utilizes because that's the way business works for everyone so 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 we understand that and and what we've done is we've built an integrations catalog which essentially allows you to click on one of these icons provide your login credentials and the systems are then connected so you can start pulling data in from that system and obviously then pushing data back into that uh, into that uh, system um, as you can see we cover all of the major uh, players that you would expect to see, um, all the Amazon stack, the Facebook, the Google, the Oracle, Salesforce, um, even some of the um, media activations and, and DSPs, etc. And the way we go about this is, is, is um, it's a constant evolution. So we continuously build out these integrations based on uh, the requirements of our customers. So as a, as a tool becomes more popular or more use in use, it goes up the queue and every release we release a new set of, of connectors. I think we've released 25 in the last release, taking us from 150 to 175 connectors that we have out of the box. Now, naturally, you don't always uh, utilize these popular systems. I mean, maybe you have something which is more flat file orientated. In fact, we see a lot of our customers use uh, Amazon S3 buckets. They dump just a raw data file into into the bucket, and they have treasure data go and pick that up. You know, on a, on a on a predefined interval, it could be hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, whatever the requirement is, um, and then ingest that data into the database. So. That is the crux, right? Bringing all the data in and making that as quick and as easy as possible, because you know that is ultimately the the the, the foundation of, of what a CDP does is by bringing all of your company data into one place. So 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 once we've done that, once we've connected to all of those data sources, and we've brought the data in into Treasure Data, the system then takes it through, obviously the the processing of their data whereby we stitch all the data fragments together and there's a lot of clever technology that's that's sitting inside their algorithms which are pulling fragments from one bit of uh, of technology and another bit of technology and stitching them together you know using id graphs etc to create what ultimately is this holy grail that we're talking about and this is the single customer view now this is a um this is a dashboard which has been built out in treasure data itself this particular dashboard has been built with a retail customer in mind. And as you can see, we have gone in, we have pulled all of the various data that we can from within their business. And this dashboard is now displaying data in a way which is relevant to this specific customer. Now, you know, don't take it as this is the way the system is. And if you're not a retail customer, it's not gonna work for you. This is completely customizable. But if you look to the left, we can see all of the PI data of Joshua Smith. You know, he's a male, he was born in January 1982, his phone number, his address, uh, we've got his loyalty number from, from the loyalty scheme, we know his income, his marital status, and that might be from Facebook, that might be from various other, other, other systems. Um, we know that his contact preference is email, um, we know the best time to contact him is in the evening, um, and we have all of his consent information as well. Uh, and ultimately from, from a, from a um, customer perspective uh, for this customer what they really want to understand is is what is the lifetime value of this customer to date what is their lifetime value for uh, predicted lifetime value for this year and what total revenue um, do we expect from this customer up to date and then we have you know total purchases you know how much has been spent on bicycles how much has been spent on helmets how much has been spent on accessories and then it starts breaking it down into you know where is that spend, you know, what categories or subcategories is that defined by, you know, number of orders by category, so we can tell he's a higher purchaser in this section rather than this section. And, you know, when it comes to our site, what is he mostly searching for? So we, we understand their interests and we're starting to build this, this profile of this, of this individual. Now, as marketers, we understand that you very rarely spend a lot of time at this depth 
you, you know it's rare that you'll be looking at individual by individual you would normally create segments but this is more of an indication of of the depth that we can go to in each individual because every one of these attributes or elements allow you to create segments based on them right so you can tell you can say tell me all people who spend more than eight thousand dollars this year on a bicycle for example um and as you can see, there are multiple um, different tabs here, again, all customizable, uh, that you can build up this view and have various different uh, elements. And we'll jump through a few more of those. So you have all this data, and now you want to start running omni-channel campaigns, right? And you need to understand not only the customer, but how the customer is engaging with you, how they're interacting, what's successful, what's not successful. Uh, and again, that data doesn't always come from a single system. So in this specific dashboard, in, in the campaigns dashboard, you can see there's a number of different campaigns that this customer has been involved in. You can see they span multiple different um, channels. So some of them are an iOS app notification. There's an email campaign, another iOS. Uh, there might be something uh, in store or loyalty. Uh, Facebook ad, YouTube ad, and we can see, you know, the value of, of, of those specific campaigns and how engaged or how many conversions we've had from those specific campaigns. We can also see specific reactions to campaigns, you know, how 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 good are they reacting to something from a chatbot, something from an email, something from social media, and we can build up that view of, of this customer. Again, like we said, and the PII data on the left, uh, contact preference email is because we can see um, that he, he is engaging more or we converting more from an email offer than we are from any other specific um, channel. So then, uh, you know, once we've got this, what we really want to start doing is start utilizing that data in the system to build out a deeper understanding of, of this customer and start getting into things like behaviors. Um, propensities, things like that. So we really want to understand um, the customer based on this collection of data. So for example, based on all of the data we've uh, been able to gather on Joshua, we can now understand that he's a quick decider, he's impulsive. If you send him a good offer, um, a click here, buy now for you know 20% off, you know, he's likely to convert on something like that. Um, we know that he spends a lot of time on our, on our web properties. Um, and, uh, we also know that um, uh, he is a, a, a high conversion. He has a high conversion rate. So, you know, average purchase of, of three three point four five per visit. And again, those metrics are based on the data that you have within within your um, in your data sets. Uh, another metric, so, so you know, do people add things to cart and leave them there? So I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but something I often do is is through the month I'll add things to my Amazon basket, but, you know, I wouldn't necessarily buy them. And at the end of the month, I'll review my basket and I'll decide which, you know, which things I, I want to spend my money on this month and sort of move the rest out and then I'll, I'll purchase some of those. And, we, you know, we can start building up those metrics against the customer. And here you can see sort of visits per channel, so we can see total number of visits, you know, how many are coming from app, how many are in store, how many are from a website uh, desktop, or how many from a mobile, uh, which channels, order history again, and total orders by channel. So does he normally convert on his phone? Does he normally uh, research on his phone but buy on his desktop? And again, all of these are just building up this much more in-depth understanding of who the customer is, what their trends are, and what their behaviors are. And ultimately, what we're trying to do here is build that data foundation that can then allow us to optimize um, your, your business. Uh, so, for example, there's a number of different algorithms built into the, into the Treasure Data platform itself, which allow you to utilize the data that you've already put in your, uh, ingested from your business to, to, to run across them to, to uh, provide, in this case, a next best action. So, so in this example, it's saying, well, here's three next best actions. It's saying, one, you know, give him an offer on a helmet, and this is the price you should offer him. Or two, give him an offer on a bike. And three, give him an offer on a boot bag. And again, it's saying, you know, there's 71% likelihood of conversion on this one, 60% on number two, and 55 on the second one. But not only does it do this, it says how you should be doing that recommendation. So in this case, it should be an app notification and, and also on which day, because throughout the, the the data set that we built we know when he's most likely to spend maybe he gets paid on the day before or you know whatever that might be again the same um for, for the second and third one so 
all in all, what we're doing is we are we are harnessing the data of your business, making it available um, to 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 the other parts of your of of your business to make much better decisions because we are making those decisions based on a much wider data set. And I think you know there are so many statistics out there, you know, saying about how much this type of approach and and these cdp systems are providing into companies and i think andrea you've got some of those yourself haven't you yes absolutely Jonathan. let me first uh, thank you very much for uh, the clear the clarity of uh, your explanation and everything i'm sure i'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of you folks identify themselves and the challenges that you're facing and uh, we now that we now saw that this real application of the CDPs and treasure data specifically answer actually almost uh, most of them. Um, we know this not only because we work daily with our clients to gain the full potential of these opportunities, but also because the companies that decided to implement a CDP faced tangible and fast results. And the number of the people approaching to this world are rising dramatically in these years, as you can see from this slide. <clears throat> and the marketing institutes are recording this trend too. As for example, the 52% of managers in charge of data integration are leveraging CDPs. Or the fact that the 93% of executives agree that the customer data can bridge online and offline processes for real. Or yet, the 44% of organizations use CDPs for improving customer loyalties. But they are not just trendy platforms. Uh, they bring tangible results for those companies who decided to adopt CDP. So I think that uh, Jonathan can show us some real numbers uh, taken from the customer. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Um, so obviously everyone is putting you know astronomical numbers out there in terms of of, of the benefits of, of 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 any platform and there's always you know, percentages to get attached to anything but you know in terms of what we're seeing across our customer base a couple of stats here you know up to 10 percent uplift in total first year revenue uh, and this is purely by increasing the customer transfer and customer lifetime value by understanding them better uh, we're seeing 15 percent increase in conversion rates uh, and this is purely by better you know campaign targeting again through the understanding of the customers and, and building better segment and a 45 percent increase in install revenues uh, and this is driven by better install personalization and 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 selling activity so um a, a lot of a lot of online sort of behaviors or online trends are being used to drive people into uh, into install and this is particularly true well obviously not in the current times during covid but uh but for automotive, for example, you know, the sole purpose of their website is to try and get you to book a test drive and to visit a, a dealership. Um, that is one of their key key aspects of, 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 of or measurement metrics, should I say. And I guess all of these things put together it, it is why Trisha Data has been recognized as, as the best customer data platform by MarTech Awards. And MarTech Awards is actually the same company that do <laughs> that big um, uh, landscape um, image that you showed in one of the first slides, uh, you know, so so they voted us the best uh, customer data platform. We've won a similar award in the US with Frost and Sullivan, who is a similar type of organization. And then one final thing I'd like to mention um, is that we were a strong performer in the Forest of Way for customer analytics. And I know strong performer doesn't sound, you know, like something you should be bragging about. But I guess the point we're trying to make here is, is that um, this is uh, the way for big data analytics. Um, so, so most of the players in this wave are uh, data analytics specialists. That's all they do. Uh, we are the only CDP in this wave, and so, you know, as we all know, analytics is a is a really crucial part of of marketing and, and measurement, uh, as you mentioned, Andrea. And so, so having the ability to do that within your data platform, I think, is another key thing that shouldn't be overlooked, um, because now we can make it much more real world in terms of measuring the effective eff efficacy of a specific segment based on data collected within your in your business which is then activated and all of the um, data is being pushed back in to enrich the data and then in obviously enrich your analytics so so that for us is a is another key thing that you should always look out for fantastic 
Thank you, Andrea and Jonathan, for sharing with us your insights and knowledge about CDPs. And thank you all for watching us. So it's a very important moment because we have a few minutes left to go through a couple of questions. So please, if you haven't already, feel free to ask us a question and we'll go through these now. Okay, so first question we have here is, what's the time of activation of a CDP in order to have the first use case in action? Want to take this? Uh, I can certainly, I can certainly give a go on that one in terms of you know what we're seeing. So, thanks, Jonathan. Oh, sorry, I'm on mute. <laughs> Talking to myself. <laughs> what are we doing? Click the button. Um, yeah, I can take that one. So, I think you know, for us, uh, and hopefully, I explained it correctly. Um, when it comes to getting the data into the system, we want to do that as quickly as possible. Um, uh, and I guess the best way to describe this is a, is, a, is a real use case. So, so one of our biggest customers in the in, in the US, uh, a big international beer brewing company, um, selected treasure data and imported 300 million customer profiles, which is which is a lot. I mean, that, that is you know astronomical numbers in terms of the, the amount of data they had. Um, during the process of, of, of ingesting all of those customer profiles, we removed 4 million, which were duplicates, uh, which you know, is, is a small percentage, but actually, um, the, anecdotally, they were saying that the, the, the amount they saved and just the, the, the profile cleansing almost paid for the, the platform itself. But we took them from, from, from beginning of project to delivery of first use case in eight weeks. Um, so that includes the ingestion of 300 million profiles, pushing those 300 million profiles through the cleansing process and making them available uh, for activation for their first use case. So it is not something um, that that is designed to to you know take years and years. I mean, we do suggest that that, that customers always uh, start with the order of priority and don't try and build a. a, a um, a project which is trying to satisfy you know hundreds of use cases in, in one hit you know make sure you get the right data in and i think that's the most important thing and that's where partners like bitbang play a pivotal role in understanding the business understanding the data sources uh, understanding that it's not just about dumping every single bit of data that you have in your business within the platform but it's it's about ingesting the data that makes sense that's going to be usable actionable that's going to drive your marketing efforts forward and then and then activating and then you know working on to the next one working on to the next one. hopefully that answers the question absolutely and uh, i i won't stress enough the thing that uh, is so important to have a plan and i have a plan to make it faster as possible as a bit bang working also of course working with the treasure data we see that uh, you don't want to put everything uh, on the line in the first day but you want to be strategical and we support uh, the clients and we and treasure data support the clients also to put this uh, uh, on the daily basis. So it's really, really, really important to have a plan and a strategy. Thanks a lot. Okay, Another question has come through. How does your CDP solution work in Europe? Having in mind GDPR and other data regulations. Oh. <laughs> I knew that one would come up. That's, uh, I probably should have had slides on that. Because oh, come up. <laughs> You can't really talk about data without talking about privacy and regulation. So, so uh, yeah, as an enterprise tool, obviously, uh, we are held under very, very strict um, scrutiny in terms of uh, regulation. So, you know, we have ISO 27001, a Trust Arc, GDPR compliance, CCPA compliance, and as all of the compliances, you know, are, are, are increased, we, we have to uh, uh, make sure that we abide by them. I would say the only thing that is kind of outside of our tool is 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 specific consent management. Um, consent management is 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 data that we ingest um, and uh, enrich profiles with, but the the tool itself doesn't do consent management. Um, but yeah, all of those regulations are by default covered within the platform and the way the platform works. Yeah, let me just add uh, as a, a big bang that uh, we see, of course, that uh, this is one of the main topics uh, for the CDPs in general. And uh, uh, Treasure Data can answer you, as uh, Jonathan mentioned before, but uh, in general, CDPs must answer to this uh, kind of question. It must uh, have uh, a CDP, uh, GDPR way to handle in the platform, even, uh, even if not collecting the uh, permission itself, but uh, 
make impossible to the client. Again, we say we saw that in the beginning, it uh, CDP must allow to bring back uh, everything in the hands of the companies. Again, also the GDPR management. Okay, uh, third question. If I have, for example, Adobe Analytics, Salesforce CRM, Oracle Eloqua, and a tool of personalization that doesn't belong to a marketing cloud already connected with, with each other, isn't it risky to put an additional layer? Let me take on this because actually it's our daily world. This is the typical scenario that we see in the market. Uh, having companies uh, uh, that has uh, different pieces of the stack uh, belonging, to, belonging to different vendors. And uh, the CDP actually is the perfect answer to this kind of scenario. CDPs must connect any kind of pieces uh, without uh, knowing uh, where they come from or what they do. And the, the CDPs must be able, and they are the, the perfect platform to answer to these uh, kind of issues and topics. And I think that Jonathan can agree with me on that. Yes, although I would caveat that, um, that not all CDPs are alike and not all CDPs work in the same way. So uh, obviously our, um, our, uh, our platform uh, is schemaless, which allows us to, to to ingest data from from any source. Um, not all not all CDPs are the same. Some some require you to translate your data from a source into the into the CDP's way of thinking. So so some of them, you know, not all CDP platforms will make it as easy to to work with uh, various different platforms. But you know, for us specifically, uh, I think Andrea, your answer is spot on. Um, it's 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 the way our platform has been designed to work. We understand that companies build their own marketing stack based on their own needs. You know, some are best of breed, some are best of need, and we need to be able to support whatever that is. And I think Andrea, you also mentioned I think something which is critical: that CDP should be able to slot in and out of your of your stack, you know, without causing disruption. Absolutely. You know, we don't want to push. Uh, in a in a platform that says okay, but now you have to now change this, and you also have to change that um, uh, for this to work. And I think this is the way where the the, the bigger players like the Oracles and the Salesforces and Adobe's, w when they eventually launch their CDPs uh, as a as a generally available, they're going to be very focused on their own um, environments, on their own platforms, and they're not going to be that you know that um inclined to be able to connect to any system irregardless of what brand it is or what the data type is okay so i think we're going to have to leave it there now oh no one last question we have the time for one last question now so how does your cdp solution work oh sorry sorry <laughs> it was my fault does treasure data offer data localization in emea uh, yes, yes, we do. We have we have four data centers globally. So we've one in one in the east coast of, of of the USA. We have one in Europe, which is based in Germany. Then we have one in in uh, Japan and one in Korea. Uh, obviously, Treasure Data was was uh, was started um, in in Asia Pacific in Japan. Um, so that's that's where that's why we have two centers there. Okay, thank you very much. I know we didn't get to answer everyone's questions, but we will make sure we will reach out to you individually after the webinar. Thank you to all of you for taking the time to join us today. We would love to hear from you, so please free to get in touch with us. And of course, we welcome any feedbacks you have on this webinar too. Thank you, stay safe, and until the next time, goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marie-Laura, and thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, bye-bye.